So Ethiopian Diaspora Fellowship sends Ethiopian Americans back to Ethiopia for six months service oriented fellowship. We're based basically to address three issues, which is human resource capacity issues in, in Ethiopia as a developing country that's developing very, very quickly, as most of you know. Um, the second issue is the diaspora identity, so being part of two cultures. Thirdly is there is not another organization doing this. We're based on three pillars, which is leadership, service, and creative storytelling. We're a consulting firm, so clients pay us for our services, but we work on a sliding scale. So if we work for a very small and scrappy nonprofit, we will charge them not market rate. You know, we'll give them a very reasonable fee. If we're working for a giant Fortune 500 company, we will charge them market rate. And we hope that it all meets in the middle. If you have an online voice, as you mentioned, you are sort of in this day and age at some level a diplomat. You're speaking on behalf of something. Our work is actually mostly about getting a U.S. audience to really care and dive in on, um, on issues that matter to them. We sometimes do work with international audiences, but much more it's consumer work about American audiences. We enable them to have the tools they need to become entrepreneurs in their own communities. All these women, you can read their stories. There's a hashtag we've created on social media called Beyond Bits, and you can read about what they're doing now. They've all created their own businesses and they're giving back to their communities. So one has a pig farm, one has started a market, one has a restaurant, so they're just, they're kind of doing things that are needed. That's not necessarily connected to the jewelry that they've been making, but that really sustains their community and allows them to provide a livelihood for themselves and their families. Part of the holistic care that we give them um, is financial training, some of the things we take for granted. They've never been able to um, set up a savings account to learn how to budget. We give them those tools they need and we give them a loan if they need it. And we just work with them at their skill level. It's very individual focused and we make sure that they're succeeding along the way and we work with them to get them there. We kind of alluded to a lot of the marketing and how social media plays a role and that's a huge thing for us as a fashion business. We really want to make sure we're cutting edge and we don't want to be making products that people look at and just want to buy because they want to support the women, but we want to make good products that tell us the story. Because it is a holistic business, um, we don't take donations, it's all funded through product sales, so it's a really neat concept that um, allows us to operate as a business and not as a nonprofit, which is something we're really passionate about. You want your, um, your cause or your social enterprise to really make the world a better place so when if you ever have to leave that region especially if you're working in another country you're going to leave it better than when you started my biggest advice for anyone that's sitting here with this idea is you need to surround yourself with people that know what they're doing money is an issue we are a nonprofit, which is if you're going to start something, I would try to figure out right now, how are you not going to be a nonprofit? <laughs> but we are a nonprofit, and as a nonprofit, it's like you need to ask for money. And as a woman, asking for money is just not, I can say personally, not the way I was raised. You literally have to say, so will you go give me money? Like that, that, that has to come out of your mouth. <laughs> People don't just say, oh, here's $5,000. At the end of the day, it's got to be about money. You need to have a cold-eyed approach and surround yourself mm -hmm. with people who, who understand it.